It's the Score North Twin Show. All right, Score North Twin Show Extra Innings. Declan Goff here. I'm live from the Legends Club. We got people filing in. The gates just open. Open the gates, as uh, as the Lord of the North once said here. And the LA Dodgers are taking batting practice, and uh, they'll be taking batting practice also at about 6:40 p.m. Kind of ironic that they're doing Hello. it right now. Hello. No, we'll see what happens here. And it, it doesn't really matter. By the way, my name is Declan Goff, so hit that subscribe button for uh, Daily Minnesota Twins Entertainment. That's Ross Brendel here on the Extra Innings edition of the Score North Twin Show. Um, I don't really care if you have Pablo Lopez, Louis Varlin, Joe Ryan. When you have to go Mookie Betts into Shohei Otani, into Freddie Freeman, if you're Garrett Cole, like, good luck. It Good luck facing the new murderers row that are in the L.A. there and those top three hitters. It's brutal. <laughs> And the beauty of being the Dodgers is once those players that you name Declan start to get a little bit long in the tooth and maybe aren't the current players or aren't the players that they are now, they'll just continue to pay them to play for other teams and bring in new players who can hit and do those things. It's a, uh, it's a story of the have and the haves not have nots to a degree when the twins and the Dodgers play each other, but you know, we'll, we'll see. I don't know what you're trying to insinuate out there, Ross. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. interesting One team spends there. 30, 40, 50 million dollars on a frontline starter. One team doesn't. That's all, right. all I'm saying. I like it. I get it. All right. Score North extra innings here. Let, let, let's start here. The uh, the Twins blessed us with a huge trade. The A talker. Emphasis, emphasis the A-talker. on huge. Emphasis on huge because the guy is like six foot seven, six eight. Michael Tonkin coming back to the Twins. Uh, a lot of Twins fans probably know that name, Michael Tonkin. Who the heck is that? Why do I know that? Well, he played for the Twins from 2013 to 2017, over 140 career games. Uh, He was with the Mets this year. He was with Atlanta last year. After leaving the Twins, he was in, uh, I believe, the Korean base, uh, the KBL and the Korean Baseball League. He made his way back to the majors, but uh, a little extra bullpen help because the Twins, who will, by the way, get Caleb Thielbar back probably in Detroit. Uh, if not right after that. And uh, Yohan Duran is also kind of ramping up. So the bullpen is kind of getting back after losing some of those weapons. But with Jorge Alcala, not IL yet, but still a bit unavailable. Um, The Twins do get a new arm. The first big trade comes on April 9th of the season. And no, I don't think he can hit. But Michael Tonkin uh, is going to the bullpen there for a little extra veteran arm, Ross. Yeah, and a guy who's turned himself into at least a serviceable major league pitcher as a guy who can come out Probably in the role, Declan, of maybe fifth, sixth, seventh inning. I mean, maybe the Twins will have to use him in higher leverage situations. We'll see how this plays out because of all the injuries that you mentioned. But I don't think many people at the Twins going out and making a major league acquisition before we even hit, uh, I guess, technically the middle of April. But Declan, sometimes you have to play the hand that you're dealt. And right now, when it comes to the injury bug, the Twins have not been dealt the world's greatest and. And then you start to look around and say, well, what would be available at the triple A level that could come up? Well, Declan, a lot of those guys are here. So sometimes you need to go outside the organization and make a move. And I, I look, nobody's going to get excited. You're not going to plan a parade. I don't think people are going to be running to buy Michael Tonkin jerseys. I'll get them out if you had one. But geez. exactly. <laughs> if you have one, bring it. You're going to the game tonight or tomorrow wear it but i mean it's not a move that i think is going to inspire the masses but it certainly can't hurt yeah it's an extra arm in the bullpen actually rocco had some quotes about it uh he's in route it wasn't word there was an official word if he will be active today he is in route to target field uh we'll see if he's active today i'm gonna guess no but he is potentially an option and kind of when asked you know wh- where do you kind of see him basically sliding in uh, he looks as an experienced arm that you know doesn't really necessarily have a, a big role. He won't necessarily have like the eighth or ninth inning necessarily. They need as many options as they can, obviously, in the bullpen, especially again when you're playing the Dodgers like you are today and tomorrow. Um, but yeah, an, an extra arm. And actually, last season, opponents hit just 196 against his slider. And this organization loves pitchers who throw sliders. So even though Michael Tonkin, a little long in the tooth. And yes, we're kind of uh, playing the hits here to a degree, bringing back an old friend, a guy that was still really effective with that slider, a pitch that a lot of a lot of the people in this organization like. And last season, also throwing mostly a sinker as opposed to just a straight four seam fastball. So, I think there's still something in there. I doubt he pitches today. 
But hey, it's it's like you like to your point, Ross. It's it's an extra veteran arm, and then once Steel Bar and Duran get back, there will be some maybe some difficult decisions. We'll see what happens there. But yeah, just a veteran arm that's coming back here to the Twins to help them out in the bullpen. It's also a guy Declan who pitched in 45 games last year for the uh, Atlanta Braves and threw 80 innings. So you're you're talking about a guy who can give you more than an inning. Which, by the way, to give Rocco and his team some credit. We have seen latter part of last year into this year, except for Bailey over a couple nights ago, the starters are being asked to maybe pitch a bit deeper into games and they're asking the relievers to get more than maybe one inning. So Tonkin seems to fit that mold. And by the way, after spending what a couple of years in Japan and the uh, Mexico and independent leagues, you come back to major league baseball Declan, as I pull this up for what it's worth, an ERA in the mid fours. I mean, you can't really complain about that to have a guy like that available to add to your bullpen. So we'll take it. Yeah. And look, I, I know last night, uh, one of the big talkers was why are we pulling Bailey over after 68 pitches? Again, those lefties were coming up. I actually don't, I didn't hate the move to pull over. I, I didn't hate that. They were going to see him the third time through the order. Those are three of some of the best hitters in all of baseball that are just in the lineup. But, and look, Steven Okert did his job. There was some weak contact, but He's still dropping in hits there. So if you're going to do that, in my opinion, if you're going to pull over, I would actually rather you put in Brock Stewart, who is still very effective against lefties and is more of a high leverage bullpen arm that can probably get better outs for you. So, yes, there was some confusion there. I get it. I actually agree with the move to pull over. I didn't agree with the move to bring in the lefty ochre. I understand the philosophy. I get what they were trying to do. But if you're going to do that, I'd much rather see a, uh, a high leverage arm go in there. Well, and bigger picture, Declan, too, for the Minnesota Twins, not a lot of what they do pitching matters if you're not going to hit the baseball and you're not going to drive runs in. So I think that is probably something, you know, we talk about all the injuries in the bullpen and what the Twins are facing. The numbers for the bullpen have actually been largely pretty good. So I still think the emphasis for this club right now here at this point in the season is to find ways to not necessarily get runners on base. That hasn't necessarily been the problem. You know, Walner still gets hit like every third at bat. They get on base with walks. They're just not getting people in. And I think that's probably the number one concern at this point, I think for the Twins brass and also Twins fans. Good transition, Ross. Uh, Max Kepler also placed on the injured list. That's where Michael Tonkin slides into the active roster. So Kepler going to the I.L. with a knee contusion. If you remember on opening day, he fouled a ball off his knee. Um, there's been no structural damage. It just, it's a bruise and it's inconvenient and it's causing him pain. is isn't causing it, or it is causing him to be ineffective at the plate. There was no additional test that came back that says there's structural damage. Just a straight up sore knee for Max Kepler. So he goes on the I.L. And to your point, you're probably gonna see maybe more of Matt Walner. Walner's in right field on Tuesday night. Uh, you're gonna see probably some Manuel Margot play some outfield who was leading off and hit a big home run uh, in the first game of this series. Jose Miranda, who got called up yesterday and was exclusively said by Rocco, he will not be the everyday third baseman, but he's in the lineup today, batting fifth again, but at DH. So Max Kepler goes on the injured list. To your point, more flexibility kind of happens here. Other players have to step up. Uh, we'll see what combinations they end up going with. Alex Kirloff will probably play more outfield too. Rocco hinted at that. On Tuesday night, he is scheduled to play first base with Carlos Santana, the veteran, getting an off night. But you're going to see a lot of different combinations probably in the outfield for the Twins now that Kepler is on the injured list. One name you didn't mention in there, and I don't know if you had a chance to get to availability today if you heard Rocco or just over the last few days. Where does Austin Martin play into this and how much playing time can we expect to see from Austin Martin? Because, again, this is a guy that fans are very aware of. He was probably, what, the prize in the Jose Barrios trade. And I think... The only real knock on him, I think, from a fan's perspective, if you pay attention to what he did in the minor leagues before he got to the majors, not a lot of power. I don't necessarily care if you're getting hits and you're getting on base, but where does he play in to the Twins outfield right now? Or just potentially, could he have to grab a glove and play a different position? Where's Austin Martin fit in? Well, he does start again on Tuesday night. He started on Monday night in game one of the series. He's going to start game two against the Dodgers. So yeah, probably another guy that will get more time here. He was called up and was mostly riding the bench and being a defensive replacement pinch runner uh, after the Royce Lewis injury that took place on opening day. Now, I think, Ross, I think you're probably right. You're probably going to see him in the outfield. You could maybe see him spell some time in the infield. Him and Willie Castro are kind of 
of in a, in a similar bin where they can play multiple positions. Now this team by default, I think, likes Willie Castro more and are going to probably lean on him more than Austin Martin. But yes, this does create an opportunity for Martin, who uh, was a top five pick in the draft and, yeah, was kind of the prized acquisition in the Barrios trade. He can get on base. He has a great eye. He's fast. He's athletic. The power maybe isn't there, but I will say a lot of what other scouts and what other people usually say about minor league numbers like that is you'd much rather have someone that can get on base because that's going to have a decent career for you. And maybe the power will start to come for him. I mean, he, he could certainly start to muscle up a little bit, maybe park some baseballs over the seats. But his athletic ability and his defensive prowess with his glove probably does give him some more time on top of the Kepler injury too. So, yeah, maybe some left field. Maybe some center. I know there was some center field for him in spring training. He can play a lot of the infield spots, too. Uh, Carlos Correa, I don't believe, has had a day off since the season started. Granted, there's been like four off days, so it's not like he needs a day off necessarily. But um, but you're probably going to see, yeah, some more Austin Martin. He's going to bat ninth on Tuesday, play some left field, and you're probably going to see him more in the outfield with Kepler injured, too. Uh, one uh, funny comment and aside for you, then a serious Byron Buxton note. You're a big hair guy. We always joke. You got probably you. the best hair at Score North. Your <laughs> thoughts on the flow of Austin Martin? <clears throat> Great hair, great hair. It's very reminiscent of uh, AJ Fredrickson, who people have seen on, on yes. this podcast yes. and other ones before. It's very flowing. It's very nice. Yeah, the guy's got a great head of hair. I always, always love a guy that has a has, has a decent head of hair, and I have no problem with the bald people either. Okay, no issues with that. The bald people. The bald people <laughs> got zero issues with that. If you're owning the baldness, you can't be the John Cena like bird's nest bald head on the on the oh, back of the head. That was know? bad at WrestleMania. If you saw uh, that, he's going bald again. I know, I know. Actually, it's a that's a fun transition. So I, I asked Louis Varland, a real wrestler uh, in high school at North St. Paul, and is starting for the Twins on Tuesday night. I pulled him aside last night and I said, "Hey, I know you have a wrestling background, and I think I already know your answer. But are you a WWE professional wrestling guy?" And he said, "You know what? No, I'm not. But Brock Lesnar is a big reason why I got into <laughs> actual wrestling. But my parents never let me watch it because they just said that's crap and I can't watch that stuff. So." Ironic that Brock Lesnar is the guy who obviously went to U of M and has a prolific college wrestling career, but also a very prolific UFC and WWE career. Uh, Louis Varlin, not a wrestling fan. AJ kind of poked me to go ask him about that because I asked Royce Lewis about it and he wasn't into it. I'm just I'm just a wrestling nerd, Ross, looking to talk wrestling with some baseball players. What's wrong with that? Come on. There's nothing wrong with it. I will say this. If Byron Buxton was a professional wrestler, nobody would get a hold of him in the ring when he's healthy because he's so fast. How how are you taking in the beginning of this season? It, to me, I don't want to say that the Twins have thrown caution to the wind, but it kind of feels like whatever was ailing him last year, and to your point, there's been a fair amount of off days, okay? So I'll, yep. maybe that's a part of it. But it just seems like whatever was ailing him last year, they don't seem overly concerned because he's primarily been in the lineup and he's been in the lineup at center field. It's not like they've been protecting him as much at the DH position, which I think will come as the season gets a little bit longer. Uh, you go back to what was it, Declan? Monday, Monday night, he has the tremendous catch, very Byron Buxton esque yeah. in center field. I got to imagine this is a very welcome sight for the Minnesota Twins, for Twins fans, for the leadership of the club. But I hate to be this guy. It's Byron Buxton. You're always thinking about, uh, you know, he makes that dive and he gets up. And I'm like, okay. He's fine. He's good. Uh, is that ever going to leave? I'm no, not sure it is. I don't think it will. Judd, you know, made the, oh, what a great catch. With, uh, and then he actually got up. That was good. It was just like, so that's what people are just <laughs> trained to do. Look, uh, his bat is still a little bit messy. He's going to he's gonna swing and miss a lot. but He'll get can, there, though. You can, you, you'll get there, but you can get by with some of those maybe bad at bats if he's playing the center field like we've always seen from him. Um, he is a game-changing center fielder. He actually, I think it was the Freeman pitch in the first inning. That, I mean, that, if he didn't get to that ball and he makes a huge catch there, that, that first inning looks a lot rough, too. He makes the big diving catch later on that also saved. I mean, he saved, you know, two or three runs with his glove alone yesterday. So you can sometimes live with some of that. Um, yeah, he's batting cleanup on Tuesday night. We'll see if maybe he kind of sticks it, sticks around in that spot. Kepler is usually batting fourth or fifth when facing a right-handed pitcher, so some combinations will move up a little bit. Correa moved up in the lineup to bat second. Kirloff, who uh, was out of the lineup on Monday, uh, he's going to bat third on Tuesday, so there's a lot of different options for the Twins to try to figure out. And, you know, that they're kind of going to be throwing you-know-what you know against the wall when you're struggling this much with runners in scoring position. 
Yeah, and, and a part of it, too, Declan, and, and we've talked about this, uh, you and I talked about just a few days ago, actually, but a part of it is, you know, sometimes they say in basketball, a shooter just needs to see a shot go in. Yeah, I think we're at the point with these Minnesota Twins. I know they have a track record of going through these slumps, but also they have a track record of really hitting the ball. So yeah. I, I think you just need to see a guy or two get a hit when it matters, and I think it'll start to come for everybody else. I, I really do. Maybe that's a naive take. But also just getting a win against teams that aren't the Royals, I think that could help a lot too. Yeah, and look, the the Twins are going to play these last two games against the Dodgers. They're going to go on the road after that. The Tigers are off to a decent start. But it'll it'll just be nice to play some damn baseball games, Ross. I mean, for God's sakes, they, they opened the season almost two weeks ago, and they've had four off days or four days off, including a rainout. So it's just it's been hard to get into a rhythm. It's such a rhythm sport like we talked about on Saturday. So the more consecutive games you can play, and then if this is still an issue, you know, by next week, okay, let's let's maybe start opening up that button and let's maybe slam a panic meter to a degree if this is going to be a legitimate thing throughout the year. But they haven't played consistently enough for me to really get completely on them and overreact to a, to a slow start with runners in scoring position. Yeah, I think you're just looking to stop the snowball. I mean, on this record date, I hate to be too specific. They're already four games out of first place. So you just kind of want to stop the snowball. Don't bury yourself in April and hopefully when you start to see some of these other teams and to your point, Dak, when you start to play every day, you get into more of a routine, but that will happen. I also think Declan, from a fan's perspective, we're doing this show for the fans. It's more fun when your team is playing every day yeah. and you get into the rhythm of just knowing, Oh, when I get home today, I can pop on the game. The first half of April, uh, you know me, I'm a huge baseball fan. I'm a baseball yeah. nut. I watch 140, 150 twins games a year uh, bits and pieces of every game, basically if not the whole thing. It is tough, though, the first couple weeks of the season because, oh, it's a 12-10 start. Oh, it's a 3-10 start. Oh, it's a scheduled day off. Oh, they played two games in a row. Now they're off. Oh, it's a 12-10 start again. And that's all, most of them is during during the work week, quote unquote, right? Sure. So I think from a fan's perspective, it is kind of nice when you get a couple weeks into the season because not just the players, everybody kind of finds their schedule and routine. So I know for me, this guy who loves to watch Twins baseball, I'm looking forward to some normal start times so I can pay more attention to them. Absolutely. Yeah, this is Score North Extra Innings. My name is Declan Goff. That's Ross Brendel. You can expect content uh, from every Twins home game. There'll be kind of select content on road games. So uh, if it's a night game, like it is on Tuesday night with a 640 first pitch, you can kind of expect content live on the YouTube channel and in your podcast feed shortly after uh, before the game starts. If it's a day game, uh, for example, like a noon or 1 p.m. start, you can find a recap traditionally about 30 to 40 minutes after the conclusion of the game. So that's kind of the schedule with the Score North Extra Innings content. You'll see Russ, you'll see AJ, you'll probably even still see Phil and Judd occasionally. Uh, we had Trevor Plouffe on our Big Show edition uh, on Tuesday morning. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. We did play the Immaculate Grid with him. It's always fun to play an Immaculate Grid with an actual Major League Baseball How'd he player. do? I didn't listen yet. How'd he do? I didn't we watch did it or good. listen. We okay. did pretty good. We, uh, we got Glenn Williams career 300 hitter with the twins if uh if anyone knows that deep cut australian glenn williams from 2005 only played 13 games and hit 300 i think he's like the president of like the australian baseball league now okay uh, so we used him for a square uh we use i believe luke hughes another fellow australian for a square was this yesterday. an all aussie bracket what about brad thomas do you remember brad thomas the pitcher that's a good one so there was a square on there of uh born outside the u.s and ter and u.s territories okay. so we had, we had to basically think of some other uh international players so those were two that uh that came to mind and Judd's, Judd had like obscure Judd 80s players, and those are the ones that killed our grid. They were like 4 and 5%, and everything oh, else on no, our thing was like Judd, no. sub 1. So, yeah, uh, I, funny enough, it was Judd's random, you know, and Judd gives me crap because like, some of these guys that's in the 80s, I'm like, who the hell is Happy Gilmore? You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know those guys. Uh, but, but luckily, Trevor Plouffe, an actual Major League Baseball player, was able to help us out. You can go find that episode, too, on our podcast feed and, uh, and YouTube channel. Twins going to play the Dodgers to wrap up their series on Wednesday. So, yes, you'll see an extra innings piece of content after that game. Uh, and then they'll hit the road. Again, as long as they're playing baseball and making Ross and I very happy as baseball fans, just play some damn baseball. We don't need every off day to be happening every 48 hours for the first two weeks of the season. Just play some ball, please. That's all I'm asking. And when you're playing, Declan, hit the ball. That, that would be helpful. Also Hit help. the ball. 
Hit the ball, keep the ball in the ball yard. That's my Tim Laudner take for uh, for this evening. All right, hit that subscribe button. This is the Score North Extra Innings Swing Show. My name is Declan Goff. That's Ross Brendel. We appreciate everyone liking and subscribing. It helps spread the word. Uh, we've grown this channel to over 2,500 subs, so thank you so much to help uh, for helping us get there. And, yeah, you can expect more Twins content on Wednesday. This has been Score North Extra Innings.